Hello and welcome. This video is going to be a what sold video for me for all the platforms that I sell on that are not a live selling platform. And this is every sale I made between January 1st and January 7th. And as per usual, we're going to start with my lowest performing platform first and work my way up to eBay because eBay is my main bay. Don't worry, Miss Moxie is down here. Uh, so you'll hear her screaming throughout the video and of course see her little flag wave throughout the video. So the first platform is Poshmark that I get to share with you and the first is actually a bundle. It's very rare that I lot items together but I found two skate DC skate t-shirts at the bins and I pick them up. You know this is maybe like a dollar's worth of t-shirts actually probably like a dollar twenties worth of t-shirts and they sold for ten dollars. Perfectly happy with that sale. Uh, this was an offer that a buyer sent to me. So to me, I probably made like five bucks off of this. So, and some stuff didn't end the landfill. So I'm perfectly okay with that. Again, you do you. This is a brand new pair of Elaine Bryant pants. I had these forever. When I tell you, I was so happy when the sale came through on Poshmark. So this was an offer sent to me on Poshmark for $16 and I snapped that up. I bought these for $5, I believe at a CHKD. So perfectly happy with this sale. I know like I doubled my money. So I know I used a stock photo here, which is not something I normally do, but there was no way I could photograph these pants in which they looked good. I'm just not good at photographing pants, which is part of the reason why I don't like it, but they sold. I was so excited. I didn't have to put them on Fix It Friday. I was literally about ready to do a Fix It Friday where I was gonna have to take new pictures for this pair of pants and they sold. I was like, oh, this is perfect. So now we're gonna go over to eBay. So that means I need to move Miss Moxie. Listen to her little purring ASMR. Baby girl, put your feet down. Thank you. I sold this pair of cool pants. I picked these up during Thriftmas, I think at the first Thriftmas uh, store that I went to and sold for $35. I love finding cool. It doesn't sell quickly for me but it sells for a really good price. It does all sell, it just doesn't sell quickly. I know a lot of people, Cool sells really fast for them. For me, Cool still sells normally within two months of me originally purchasing it, which for pre-owned clothing is pretty great, um, but it's not like a quick flip, but it is a consistently good flip, like over $25 flip. This is something I modeled. This is something I also picked up at the bin, so I paid like a dollar and some for this. This is a J. Crew Merino wool, which is why I decided to pick it up at the bins. I do believe me modeling this helped because it it's very twee. If you guys remember like in the early teens, you know, the new girl type of aesthetic. Like if you ever watched the show New Girl, like this is very that. So I was about ready to relist this as well when it sold. Uh, and I was going to put Twee in the title because that's now its own sub genre that I didn't realize. Uh, an aesthetic that people look out for now. So uh, it sold for $12.64. Again, I got this at the bend, so super cheap by cost. So this next giant bundle of awesomeness here, this Chico's Traveler's Awesomeness, I have Leah to thank. Leah, thank you again so much for watching all of my videos and also for being so supportive in my business. I do hope these were for you and that you love them. And as soon as that Helping the Homeless video for Thriftmas went live, Helping the Homeless is the name of the thrift store. It wasn't like a charity thing or anything. Well, the thrift store is a charity. It doesn't matter. Leah, thank you very much for this absolutely huge purchase. And I hope you are loving the skirts. And I, I cannot thank you enough for just how supportive you've been here, both on this channel and then also with my business. I do hope you're loving everything you buy from me. It does mean a lot. This is actually something I have Donna to thank. Donna, uh, my friend Donna, she donated this to me because she's like, I don't, I don't wear it anymore. It doesn't really fit me. Uh, this is an Under Armour quarter zip with like the little thumb holes, which is we love, we love here. Uh, and it sold for $15.19. So Donna, thank you very much for helping me in my business and for donating to me. It's really nice. I really, I am very grateful to my friends that they're both so supportive to me here on my YouTube channel and then in real life 
by being my friend and then also supporting my business by like donating stuff to me it means a lot this is an oak hill piece so it took a year for this to sell this is one of those items that i picked up for the collab i did with matt amber and a lot of josh i miss a lot of josh i hope he's doing well uh, but this is something that was in matt's menswear manifesto and it took a year to sell so it's not 100 percent foolproof oak hill is a plus a big and tall plus brand for men uh, and it's still sold it sold for $16.89 I paid like five dollars for this at a thrift store for that collaboration this is Adriana Goldschmied the Farrah High skinny I bought these I believe when I was in California and I finally got around to listing them when I was doing my money pile Monday so this is awesome that they finally got listed and that they sold I doubled my money on this I did pay up for these because shopping thrift store shopping in california is expensive but i figured i i had seen i don't know who i was watching where they were still having success with this particular skinny jean you know what I, I i just pick up stuff that i think people would want to wear chasing a trend can be a good business model um but i feel like there's always going to be people that are wanting to stick to their skinny jeans so there we go so this is Disturbia. This is something I also think I picked up at the bins. Um, this is a heavy denim skirt. So I believe this probably cost like around $2 when I purchased it. Disturbia is an alternative UK brand, thus the title. And this uh, sold on an offer of $17.50. It was really interesting too because I actually got a message when the buyer got it and I was like, oh no, what's wrong? And they're like, is this washed already and i said yes everything gets washed in a uh, dye and perfume free laundry detergent um, but prior to being photographed and listed and she's like oh that's awesome thanks <laughs> like i guess i do know that there are some resellers that don't wash the stuff that they get from the thrift stores beforehand again you do your own thing but I do that because I know the thrift stores here spray this like disinfecting spray and I'm allergic to it. So I actually more or less do it for my own benefit. <laughs> and it just happens to help out others apparently. This is a Hardy Boys book. I paid 50 cents for this at the bins. So it sold for $3.50. Again, if that's not something that you're into, no worries. I, again, love buying and selling vintage books because I do not want to end them in, I don't want them to end up in a landfill. This is something I paid five dollars for at an estate sale. This is from the 70s. It had a matching pillow with it. Yes, both things did get washed. Um, but it sold on an offer for $40 and then the buyer paid $20 for shipping. I just thought this was so cool. And this is just I, I can just see this in an Instagram post, like in a papa -son, like laying up against with like one of those uh, big uh, rattan, not rattan, macrame, like one of those big macrame planters with like a pothos on it and then like a fiddle leaf fir, fir, a fiddle leaf fig tree next to it. I just, I can see the vibe, but it sold for $40. Again, I, I'm still picking up vintage Afghans. I'm just really bad at lift, listing them. Uh, I do have three more I have to list uh, that because I've emptied out one of my blanket boxes. But this was a great sale and I was super happy to see this go. So this pair of vintage Anchor Blue uh, slacks sold for $34.87. Anchor Blue was like apparently not a great brand when it came out. But because of the Y2K resurgence, just like with mud jeans now, I was checking comps on mud jeans because, you know, my friend... Paul over at Philly Flipper, who's now Florida Flipper. I don't think he's changed his name yet. It's just he's moved. Um, he can sell mud jeans. And I was just checking because I actually saw a pair of mud jeans at the thrift store. And I was checking comps. And I was like, are you kidding me? And it's, it's about this because this is what's on trend right now. So this sold for $34.87. I picked these up when I was in California because this is more of like a West Coast brand. And yeah, I paid like two dollars for these pants and i remember being at the thrift store at eco thrift with courtney and she was like really you're gonna pick those up and i was like yeah no these sell really well and yeah they did they sold like within a week of me listing it 
so, so <laughs> this is a great sale. So yeah, really happy to turn $2 into 35. I would love to do that more often, but I don't live on the West Coast. So my, my chances of finding Anchor Blues are really slim. So this is a hat that took absolutely forever for me to get around to listing. And when I did, it it sold like much quicker than I thought it was going to. It sold for my full asking price of $24.87. This is from the 60s. I paid like three or $4 for it at an estate sale. Uh, it's just like a cloche style mod hat. Very, very cool. I was like super excited when I found it. And then like, you know, the dopamine wears off and then you just, it just sits there and you don't list it. But I finally got around to listing it and it sold much faster than I thought it was going to and for my full asking price. This is something I picked up at the bins for Thriftmas and this sold pretty much within 48 hours of me listing it. This is a linen skirt. The brand is Markwear and this sold on an offer of $25.39. Again, it sold, I got it at the bins and it's linen so I paid probably like a dollar 25 for this and it sold like within 48 hours. So this is definitely a brand I will look out for. And it's always nice when you find something at the bins uh, that you can uh, flip really quick like that. This is another thing that I picked up for Thriftmas. This is a Lucky Brand uh, top. And I picked this up, I believe, at the Helping the Homeless thrift store. So this was buy one, get one free. So this cost me $2 and it sold for 11, so that's great. I'm perfectly happy to pick up Lucky Brand shirts if I get them for really cheap because they typically sell between the 10 to like $16 range. This is a vintage 60s cute little Peter Pan collar top. This is from that big vintage haul that I am still staring at behind this camera. This, again, I had basically recouped all of my money from this giant estate sale haul uh, on whatnot, so everything I sell from now on is basically pure profit. So this $12 of profit. Awesome. <laughs> I, I'm really happy whenever anything from this big vintage haul uh, sells, mostly because it's taken me forever to list it. Oh my goodness, these contact paper things. So I was like this. I have so many of these uh, and like seven different types of these contact things. And I was like absolutely so excited when I went to the restore near my house here in Newport News. And like, I bought an entire case of this. I spent probably a hundred dollars on contact paper at this restore because at the time I had bought this, it was, I was getting fed a lot of content on TikTok and also like on you, on one of my YouTube accounts that I have of like renter friendly ways to like upgrade your space. And all of them, the lifestyle girlies, were using contact paper to like, as a renter friendly way to do their space. So I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna make so much money off of this because I found a bunch of really cool ones. Like, there's just like the basic black and white. And then like, we have this nice little like flower dahlia. I was just so excited for this. And then these have sat. These have sat for so long. And I finally sold some. <laughs> so I sold two of them and they are the um brown 70s strip is what i decided to title it and i sold two of them uh so i have recouped some of my cost now i have also sold two more now so i have noticed that when i do a variation listing like this it takes forever to get that first sale unless it's like a super high demand item but once you get that first sale, it just is a slow and steady like stream from there. It's just getting that first sale that is is the issue. So it's happening for me now. Sold for my full price of $19.74. And that's like if you buy more, you save more. Because again, I want to get rid of this. Because I've had it for, I think at this point, like over a year. Like a year and a half now. So I don't know. I'm not upset I bought it. Everything sells eventually. And it is starting to sell now. So maybe don't get as excited as I did about the contact paper, unless you find mushrooms. If there's contact paper with mushrooms on it, buy it. I, I would still in a heartbeat buy that. This is something else from Thriftmas. I picked this up at the yard sale. I paid a dollar for this. It sold for six. This is the Braveheart soundtrack. Uh, this was a new sealed thing. Another thing that I picked up for Thriftmas and something I have to thank a viewer for, Diane, thank you very much. I believe they bought this as a gift for a friend. I'm not 100% sure, but I do hope it made it to you in one piece. 
I'm guessing so since you already left me positive feedback. But this was a beautiful Georges Briard uh, little cheese tray. It's the first time I found one of these that actually still had the original knife attached to it. I have found so much Georges Briard <laughs> during Thriftmas. Like I, I would find normally one piece every six months and I managed to find like three pieces in a month. So that was a treat for me as someone who loves and looks out for that particular mid-century designer. Sold for $11.47 sold for $11.40 and I paid 50 cents for this. So again, Diane, thank you very much for purchasing for me. This is something I think I got at the bins. This is a Disney Mickey Mouse uh, long sleeve t-shirt sold for $10. Buyer paid, of course, for shipping. So this is a, a vintage piece. I was actually really sad when it sold, not because that I particularly cared that it had the American flag on it, but this was the softest, coziest acrylic sweater I have ever worn in my life. I have never felt a vintage acrylic sweater this soft ever. I loved this thing. <laughs> if it had like something else on it besides the American flag, I probably would have absolutely had to keep it, but this was an amazing sweater. It sold for $20 on an offer and the buyer paid for shipping, but yeah, this this was awesome. Like if this was just like a regular, like even if it was just a straight gray or a straight green sweater and didn't have any like embellishment on it, I probably would have kept it because this thing, as soon as I put it on, it was a mistake putting it on because I was just like, oh no, I'm going to be sad when this sells. And I was sad and I'm still sad because it was awesome. So this is a pair of figs that I got during Thriftmas. My first time ever finding figs was during Thriftmas. And then I, again, just like with the George Briard, found a bunch of it. Uh, it sold for $22, uh, so this was on an offer, and yeah, I paid like $5 for this, so it was awesome. This is something I picked up at the bins, so I paid $0.50 cents for this vintage Casper book. Again, these vintage children's books from like the 40s, 50s, and 60s, if you can find them and they are not chewed on or drawn all over. Uh, if it, they have like the kid's name written in it somewhere, that's normally okay. But if you can get it in good shape, these can be worth at least what I think to be a decent amount of money. Um, this is definitely way more expensive than it originally cost <laughs> in the 60s, but sold for $6.87. And this is the first edition hardcover of Casper, which I thought was cool. This is something that I picked up when I first started reselling and it took three years to sell. <laughs> it's a pair of vintage Royal Dalton. Uh, this is a pair of like wheat salt and pepper shakers. I don't really pick up salt and pepper shakers as much as I used to, uh, unless they're like really interesting or special or like super catchy. Uh, like if I find uh, some old computer or Y2K themed salt and pepper shakers, I'll pick them up or like really like mushroom ones. Yeah, of course I'm going to pick those up, but I don't pick the well, salt and pepper shakers up as much as I used to. I paid $2 for these, so I still made a decent profit. I just took too long to realize it. This is something I paid 25 cents for at the bins. This is a set of Civil War uh, postcards, uh, something that, again glorifying the South because I live in Virginia. Uh, I paid 25 cents for these at the bins. It had all 12. They, it was a brand new, basically, pack of postcards that I picked up for 25 cents, and someone offered me $8, so I happily uh, sold that to them. And this is a pair of Vineyard Vine pants. These were brand new with tags, which is why I picked them up. I paid $5 for these at the Goodwill in Williamsburg, sold for $42.39. Again, awful picture. <laughs> I am terrible at taking pictures of pants. So when they sell, I get really excited because I'm like, even if you have ugly pictures, you can still sell stuff <laughs> if it's what someone's looking for. Now, this is a beautiful picture because it's a beautiful piece. This is something else I picked up for Thriftmas at the Dav in Hampton. I, I ran into an entire glut of amazing, vibrant, vintage 90s like button fronts. This one was a men's one. Uh, this was a men's large, sold for $15. This was pink. It was like bright neon colors. 
and it had a bunch of fish on it. I just thought it was a cool shirt. Super glad someone else did too. This is a vintage purse I picked up at a thrift store and paid $4 for it. It sold for $18.50. Uh, it did have a little bit of a nick in the leather, uh, which is why I was totally happy with it going for $18.50, but it was a beautiful vintage piece and I just didn't want it to get thrown away. This is another piece I picked up at the yard sale for Thriftmas. Again, I paid a dollar for this and it sold for $6.69. I will pick up most sealed CDs that I find if I can get them for a dollar or less. This is a vintage paperback edition of Gone with the Wind from the 60s and this I have Melissa to thank when I did this haul. Melissa kindly purchased this from me. I did mention it when I did the haul and I was like, I mean I'm not going to be sad if this doesn't sell because you know it's, it's a, I just like the floppy feel of like the 40s, 50s, and 60s like pulpy books. Um, so at Melissa, I hope as you were reading this that you also enjoyed that, but they purchased this for me for $6.87. So Melissa, thank you very much. And I appreciate you watching both my videos and then also, uh, being a supporter of saving vintage books from the trash. I, I, I appreciate that. This is a pair of vintage Levi's jean shorts that I actually found in the kids section for Thriftmas. I saw the little orange tab when I was walking by the kids rack that were very sad and empty when I walked by them, but which is why this stood out to me. And I was like, that's an orange tab. And then I looked at them and realized that they weren't kids. Sold for $15, I paid $4 for these at a Goodwill. This is something I picked up at the bins. This, for, I think, believe for Thrift Miss. This is Nike Sportswear Grow Your Soul. It sold for my full price, asking price of $7.87. I believe this sold like before I could put the video out. So it was like one of the things that had sold when I was doing the haul portion of the video. So I, I was very surprised that this sold as fast as it did. Uh, and it was at the bin, so I paid like a dollar for it. Another vintage purse that sold. Uh, this one is from the 40s. I couldn't tell if it was Bakelite or Lucite, so I just put both in the title and was like, eh. <laughs> I am not ashamed to do that. Uh, this sold for $29 and the buyer paid for shipping. I, again, I love picking up these like statement vintage purse pieces because I find that they sell really well. I, I, I normally, when I go and look at the purses, I literally just look at them and if nothing catches my eye, I just move on. Um, because if it catches my eye as someone who doesn't necessarily carry a purse, it's probably worth something, which is how I spotted my doll's kill bag that I absolutely love. That is all of my sales. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This, again, this is just stuff that's selling for me. As you guys can tell, I sell all levels of stuff from like a couple of dollars to a couple of tens of dollars. <laughs> and it's just a variety of stuff. So I, I, I typically like to sell what I like. Uh, it does make it just a little bit easier for me to list. Not, not a lot. It's still, it's still pain point in the reselling business. But it, if I, if I like something, I am more interested in listing it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Till then, bye. Bye.